Sup gamers, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another episode of The Laws of Time Travel with Dr. Ozone Zone. In today's exciting episode, I've got a few things I need to talk about. And although the video is titled with the first ever Fazbear Fright story into the pit, I'll be taking a lot of information from the epilogue of Gumdrop Angel, so if you haven't read it or listened to my audiobooks, then go do that. The reason I'm making uh, th this video is because of all of the Fazbear Fright stories, the one that has left me the most confused on all of the concepts and possibilities of Five Nights at Freddy's is Into the Pit. As a very brief reminder, Into the Pit is all about a young boy named Oswald uh, on his summer holiday while his mum and dad are at work and he gets to do nothing except read books at the library and go to Jeff's Pizza. He then finds a magical ball pit that takes him back in time to the year 1985 at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And then he sees Spring Bonnie next to the six dead children. Uh, then a load of weird stuff happens, we'll talk about that later, uh, but for now I think we should probably talk about the elephant in the room. How on earth are 60% of you not subscribed to this channel? You know that all it takes is for you to scroll down a little bit, press press that red button. If we hit 10k by July, then we're gonna make a full timeline video and that's gonna be difficult. So uh, if you don't subscribe, then uh, we can forget about it. To be honest, I'll probably make a full timeline video when Security Breach comes out anyway. Either way, we are so close to 10,000 and I would love to hit it in the summer, so it would mean the world if you subscribed. Anyway, the actual elephant in the room is the fact that this story includes an unexplained ball pit that is actually just a time machine. However, when you think about it, time travel is actually a paradox. Because if I could travel to the past, then why haven't people from the future traveled to our time yet? The concept of time travel in both the real world and in Five Nights at Freddy's just wouldn't make sense. Uh, we could go back to the past so that Afton was never born in the first place. We could go back to save the children that were killed. We could go back to a time when FNAF AR just didn't exist. I'm sorry, Illumix. This is what my fans wanted. Hopefully you understand that this story isn't just really possible the way that it's displayed. Uh, and for ages I've been trying to figure out how it was possible. Could it have been a dream, you know? Maybe, maybe it just didn't have a meaning, it just didn't have an explanation, but why? Well, after reading epilogue number eight, I think we are now a step closer to our answers. In this epilogue, we actually see two different viewpoints, one from Jake in the Stitch Wraith, and the other from Larson after being rescued from the previous part. We're going to be focusing on Larson because we get some really juicy information from him. Um, so after the Stitch Wraith healed uh, the wound from Afton, he realises that the Stitch Wraith may not be that bad after all. Uh, and while he's recovering, he has many hallucinations uh, from different places, different times, and from different people. Um, but there's one thing in common with all of them. There's a ball pit. Ah! Larson then goes out and searches for this ball pit and he comes across this old restaurant which I think we can see is none other than Jeff's Pizza. He finds the ball pit and it has the exact same description as the ball pit in Into the Pit. You know, red, blue and green balls, dusty layers all over them, the netting around even things like the like the warning sign not to go in. There is one extra detail though, and that is the fact that these balls are covered in old blood. So what does this mean? Well, obviously this connects into the pit, into the Stitch Wraith timeline, which is a connection that we haven't seen prior to this story. The balls were covered in blood, probably because it takes place after the events of Into the Pit, where Oswald's dad takes a beating, and also Oswald gets bite marks across his arm. The bigger question, however, is what is the significance of this ball pit, and why did Larson see all of these visions? My guess is that it has a lot to do with Afton's infection on Larson. He wasn't getting hallucinations before this event, 
but while he was recovering, he was. Uh, and so there's a clear connection there. Now, if you didn't watch my previous video on the story of what we found, I suggest going to watch it because I explained this all a lot better. But essentially, Afton is able to create hallucinations because of the high amount of agony in his suit. And I think that the ball pit, uh, the ball pit has a very similar story. Remember that back in 1985, the ball pit saw the events of Spring Bonnie killing six kids, and as a result of this, it's entirely possible that the pit was then synergized with agony. What does this mean? Well, it means that Oswald wasn't actually there in 1985. Instead, the power of agony is able to make him hallucinate somebody else's viewpoint from that time. And I'm just going to go out on a limb here. It could even be his father's viewpoint because we know that he is aware of Freddy Fazbear's pizza and we know that he is reluctant to tell Oswald about what happened there. Probably because he was there on that day of the incident. I do have a few things to mention about this theory. Firstly, there was a weird moment in the story where Oswald was upset because he felt like Chip and Mike were paying for all of, all of the thingies with all of their tokens and he didn't have any to put in. But then it was a really weird part because right afterwards Oswald felt something in his pocket and in his pocket were a ton of game tokens. It's never really explained but remember now we know it's just all a hallucination. So it's not actually real world magic but it's just the pit getting into Oswald's head. I also want to briefly mention that Mike in this story could actually be Michael Afton. Let me know what you think about that. Spring Bonnie in this story is a very similar situation. He's always seen by Oswald in the shadows, but nobody else in the pizzeria actually acknowledges his existence. Uh, and this leads me to the second part of this story. When Oswald leaves the Manic from 1985, his dad gets pulled in by Spring Bonnie. And then the weird part is that Spring Bonnie basically becomes his father. Everybody else sees his father while Oswald, and strangely his cat, sees the Spring Bonnie suit. So he freaks out for a bit, then returns to the pizzeria, and then Spring Bonnie, the, the suit gets left unanimated. Some, the person in the suit leaves the suit, and then it's just there dangling over the ball pit. Uh, and then Dad comes out of the ball pit with no memory of anything. Now this... This just confuses me. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you right now, I don't have any explanation for any of that. And if you guys have any thoughts about any of it, then please do leave a comment below. I would love to hear what you think. Uh, I think it's still possible that the ball pit corrupted Oswald, much like Afton corrupted Larson with the infection, which is why he is the only person to see Spring Bonnie. Um, still, that does beg the question though, why does his cat see it too? Of all, of all living things, why does his cat also see Spring Bonnie? I think the main thing to take from this video is that the events of Into the Pit aren't necessarily completely real. Um, Gumdrop Angel was a book that cleared up a lot about agony and how hallucinations are created and things. And I think this really helps us to understand Into the Pit just that little bit more. I'm going to leave it here um, for today, so once more, if you do have any more thoughts or theories about any of this, I would love to know what you think, so make sure you comment down below, and if you enjoyed, remember to subscribe. 10k is just over the horizon, and I would love it if you would join our journey towards it and our adventure afterwards. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later. Goodbye.